Hey, this is Tim Pierce. Here's a rhythm lesson, a rhythm concepts lesson for my friend Jason Sheff. Jason took Peter Cetera's place in the band Chicago three decades ago as the bass player and the tenor lead vocalist. And he stayed with them all the way through their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a few months ago. Jason's dad is a session player that I played with Jerry Sheff. And Jason's dad played on all the Doors records and with Elvis Presley and tons of other stuff. He's, Jerry's quite a legend. Uh, so check this out. If you want to see the full series, click the link below. Let's do it. Where it really gets fun, and for me, the way I always think, and some people say, well, that's not right. But for me, I constantly hear 16th notes. Okay. You do too. I know you do. But, for so, one E and a two E. And a so the bar is one. So if I'm eighth notes, one. So where that really comes into being a lot of fun is when you start playing figures. They're 16th notes. Because you have that clock going in your head, you're just dropping in notes in and out in different spots. Exactly. Right. And that's the whole secret. So even if it's a ballad, right? It's sixteenth right. notes on a slow ballad. Right, oh, man. So that's me. I mean, I'm always thinking sixteenth notes. It's like it's just an entire. To me, it's like a. It's an entire music lesson. You can really separate the pros from from the amateurs, and this is that's why I think this is such a great lesson to learn, is that. I always look at songs and music that there are certain anchor points that are so important. The first note of the song, the first beat and note of a verse. Sure. The first note and beat of a chorus. Right. If right. they are if you everything else is going great, yeah. but one of those is forsaken, it's amateur land, yeah. right? Right. Right? You're right. And then again, I so if you look at the beginning of a song, note one, halfway point, chorus two, let's say. Right and then the last note of a song. So you've subdivided it in half, and then just start dividing it backwards and forward. So, so let's say that note one, chorus one, chorus two, whatever it is, bridge or chorus uh, three, three or four, and then out, and then just keep slicing them up. So those, to me, those anchor points are so important. And that's, I think somebody could somebody could just up their game and get professional just by knowing that so make that's sure. a really good point is that when you announce a new section of a song mm. the confidence of everybody being in the right place in the same place right. at the same time is something you, we take for granted right. because we work with such 
you know, seasoned people, but that's mm-hmm. really a good point is, yeah. is to try and make sure every entrance to every mm-hmm. new section is spot on. My father, you know, I'm sorry, I got to brag yeah. about daddy. Yeah. But one of the greatest as far as note value. And those notes cut off on the 16th. So think about that, people, that the note value is either cutting off on an eighth or a sixteenth, but not in between. That's note value. Yeah. That's beat and yeah. feel, right? So it's like. Right? And I don't even need to play the, the note. Oh. Right, so they're just they're just the the beginnings and the endings of the notes are falling. On. Now I hate to use the word grid because it's gotten so nuts no, when people okay. are looking at music. Yeah. But what's going on as far as in the head? Because your your head, if you're not listening to a click, that's going to be the human aspect of it, right? So you don't have to worry about it being mechanical and precise like that as far as perfect time. But I love the idea of, of, of note value cutting off on the grid. You, you can watch it here if you, you know, if you, yeah. if you did it and yeah. actually watched it. I mean, come on, some of, some of the coolest modern music, they're, somebody just, you know, playing some notes and then they're chopping They're them. just chopping it out, right. They're exactly. chopping them on yeah. the subdivision yeah. of a note, time. right? Yeah. That's why it sounds and feels so good. Yeah. So if you can start thinking that way and play that way before they even get to it, yeah. that's what great yeah. musicians such as yourself and all your pals do. Yeah. So, so it's the space between the notes that yes. makes the pocket and the groove. Love it, man. What a fun thing to talk. Yeah. It's one of those things. <clears throat> So let's take a look at this on guitar. Long note, short note. I'm still counting the sixteenths. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And indeed, that short note is a sixteenth. So the first stroke takes up three sixteenth notes, and the last stroke takes up one. And then I'm going to fill in. And there's a space again. Something different. In that case, I'm leaving the downbeat off. One, two, three, four, down. Downbeat. Let me show you the chords. Uh, I was playing them down here when Jason was in the room. It's a C, B flat over C. F minor, and this is very similar, C, B flat, F, A flat, which is really F minor 7, if you put F in the bass, or F minor if you add that to it. So the C chord right here, basically index finger, string 5, fret 3, and then I bar my little finger across fret 5 on strings 2, 3, and 4. Most people might use the third finger, but I use my little finger. And then I simply pull it off of the neck and let the index finger bar all the way across to get the B flat over C. And then the F is here. Index finger barred across 1 and 2. And there. And then you could grab the low note if you wanted to. And then to get the F minor, I simply remove my third finger and I 
barring all the way across the first three strings. My index finger. And those stay the same here on fret three. We have F, F minor. And then up here, it's the top half of this C chord right here. And then I drop down. Well, let me spell this. Fret 10, string four. Fret nine, string three. And fret eight, strings one and two. And that's barred. Just drop it down two frets to get the B flat. And then we switch to this inversion right here, which is really the F chord. Spelled like this, but the little finger's not involved. And what this is, is my index finger's barred all the way across five, and then the second finger comes up on six and grabs string two. That creates most of it, and then the third finger drops in string four, fret seven. And then I drop down to an A flat, which is simply the same thing we did here at fret 10 and at fret 8, but the A flat is actually at fret 6. That's this finger at fret 6. So, pretty much the same chord change, just spoken in two different places. C, B flat, F, F minor, or A flat. There's A flat, there's F minor, F minor 7. If you want to make it a true F minor, drop in the little finger. And then once again, C here. B flat over C, which is essentially the same as B flat, and then F, and then F minor, and those are the chords.